Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast. I'm your host, Bob DeMarco. And tonight, actually, I don't need these. I should take them off. Just in case one of you comes on, I will use these. Uh, I don't need them tonight. Can't figure out how they work with my new microphone. Anyway, uh, welcome to the show. Coming up tonight, I want to talk about essential EDC gear besides knives. Uh, the other things that you carry. Uh, a lot of us carry a lot of different things. Um, uh, some of us, I mean, I watch Cutlery Lover. I, I love him. Hey, what's up? Playing with uh, addicted to EDC, playing with knives at least eight in arms reach. Nice. Yeah, if you could see here, you'd see quite a bit. Anyway, I love those uh, pocket dumps by Cutlery Lover. Hey, Wallaby, good to have you here. And hey, Alex, what a pleasure. Pleasure to have you. As always, close at hand. Caleb, how you doing? Uh, don't worry, Alex. I will do a review of this post haste and get it back to you. And I have not carried it over cement or any other kind of uh, hard uh, ceramic -y kind of um, uh, surface. Barrage boys, good to have you. Michael, a pleasure as always. Good evening, folks. Uh, so yeah, EDC gear. I, I, I'm not so much into the torches or the flashlights. <laughs> uh, not me. Those days are over, sir. Hey, Douglas, good, Doug, good to have you. James, Bond, that is. Good to have you here, Mr. Moore. Always a pleasure. Nice to have you, Minnesota Knife Consumer. Con uh, assuming that's what MN stands for, of course. Chris Blade Ogre, good to have you here, sir. Uh, I like pens. Uh, you know, I love watches, but, you know, I can't afford to, 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 uh, to have a watch habit. Um, but uh, every every couple of years, I, I I end up buying a new watch. Usually, uh, the past couple of years, past couple of times, it's been Seiko's. Plus, I've been lucky enough uh, that my dad gets frustrated with automatics, uh, automatic watches. So I got a nice uh, Luminox from him. So that's kind of how I get my watches. Thank you very much. That's where I'll keep it. Uh, pens to me, I love pens, um, and I don't have too many expensive ones, but. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we want uh we we're gonna have Jim come on and talk about ice picks real soon. Hey guys, over there the shutter knife review, Ezekiel. Good to have you here, sir. Jonathan, always a pleasure. Hope you guys are liking that knife. Uh, you know, I think it's one that's right up your alley. Uh so yeah, let me know what else you carry uh besides knives. And um, you know, I recently um was kind of shamed here. Well, well, this is a good way to go into a pocket check. So uh I'll I'll start with what was in my my left pocket. And uh, I always keep this, basically, I've been carrying this a lot for the past while. Uh, and it's got a place for a slip joint knife, it's got a place for a flashlight, and it's got a place for a pen. And yes, I'm still carrying this uh, mini mag light that just, just makes people just makes people skin crawl. They can't believe I carry a mag light. So uh, I did end up getting this uh, this nice little O light, and this is a I know uh, for for torch guys or flashlight guys, this is this is such a starter model it wouldn't even be considered. Barry, how you doing? How do how do I use fountain pens? Uh, very well, sir. Thank you. No, I I, uh, I love fountain pens. So this thing doesn't quite, and we'll talk about those in a sec. This thing doesn't quite fit in here. Uh, I guess it does. It's breaking in. Knife, watch, light. All right. All right, knife, watch, and light. Keeping it keep, so I'm I'm assuming James more than one knife. Is that a safe assumption? I don't know. I feel like a lot of us carry more than one knife because we have the main one, the main featured knife of the day, right? And then we have a secondary or a tertiary blade, uh, maybe one for self defense and one for opening up food packages. Like today, I had the uh, GEC number sixty two Congress in blindingly white. Uh, unicorn bone here and um, love this amazing Warncliffe blade on this knife. Um, I am a little bit unhappy, not unhappy. I, I get uh, a little bit crazy when there are too many fingerprints on the, on the knives. But other than that, you know, the first world problems, of course. And then it's a Congress, which means it has two sides of blades coming together. And this is the other quite sharp and useful pen blade. I got this uh, on the Blade Forums uh, knife exchange and um, the guy who had it before me sharpened it very, very nicely. Speaking of which, I have two knives coming back from Jared Neve, which I can't wait to show you. He's put 
beautiful edges on them. And then this is a Coeco um, Lilliput, I believe this is called, a Lilliput, a little tiny um, fountain pen. Now, I love fountain pens. I've been writing with them since high school. And, uh, you know, I, I was, uh, I went to art school and, uh, you know, I was a sensitive kid. I always had a journal, sketchbook kind of thing. And, uh, you know, I, I also had a German teacher in high school who was from Great Britain, British guy, uh, Keith Green. Shout out to Keith Green. Uh, and he uh, also wrote with a fountain pen, and that really stoked my interest. And he he uh, let me know that, uh, oh, thank you, sir. Thank you. He Or sirs, I guess I should say. He let me know that a fountain pen, you should not let anyone else write with your fountain pen because uh, the nib takes on your own special writing style. Uh, the nib develops, you know, wears at at the same rate, kind of like a pair of shoes. You wear the heels down uh, the way you walk. It's the same thing with writing with a fountain pen. Over time, it will start to develop that, uh, you know, that's that um, specialized signature, I don't know, wear in on the nib. And then it's not, it's kind of harmful for other people to grab your pen and use them. Plus, most people don't know how to write with a light hand with a fountain pen oftentimes you have to be ah, no 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 not not with this pen here i have a bic or something else but uh, i'll i'll occasionally let my daughters use them and and you know it took a couple of times when they were little of watching the net the nib just sort of spread open and watch ink just gush out to be like no honey little lighter little lighter uh okay also uh in my edc today so 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 pens for me pens I want to, uh, Nick Shabazz has quite a collection of cool little pocketable pens. Uh, if any of you have any suggestions, oh, I also have, well, we'll get to these in a minute. Uh, my my uh, other bit of carry today was my brand new to me, Yo Jumbo. I just got this on uh, Blade Forums also from a, from a, a good seller. And uh, I love this knife. I can't believe I weighed it here. I'm not even going to do that with my left hand. I can't believe I waited so long to get one of these. Uh, I did. Uh, the pen is mightier than the knife. Yeah, sometimes. <laughs> the uh, I took this. I I, wore, I ground this down a little bit. It was uh, there's like this big hump that comes up in the middle and kind of separates your your two fingers like the. Um, Kind of like the uh, what's the big bench made? Um, you know what I'm talking about. The big big bench made. It does that. It's the big Warren Osborne. Someone help me out here. It splits your fingers right here. And I always thought that was a little bit uncomfortable, even though that's a wicked cool knife. Wicked cool. So yeah. I, okay. Um, I spent a summer in Boston. Uh, hey hey, eighty six Recon. Good to have you, fellow knife junkies. Look at the size of this thing. This is here. The Yojimbo, I think, is just a beautiful knife. Actually, if we're going on pure aesthetics, I would say the Yojimbo 2 is a better looking knife. Um, I think they did a great job of stretching it out and translating it into a four inch blade. But I still think this is, I don't know, that design to me is just a little bit more beautiful. Uh, but once I removed this sort of partition in the middle for my fingers, it fits perfectly. Now, someone with big meat, uh, like meat hooks, mitts, might want to go straight across. You should definitely check out uh, Hilltop Gear. Uh, BJ Hill does these amazing mods of the Yojimbos, or Yojumbos and Yojimbos. And I, when I got this initially, I thought, I'm going to send this to him. And then I thought, I kind of want to noodle with it myself. And so that is what I'm doing. Uh, I might end up sending it to him after all, but for now, I'm going to. Uh, I'm gonna. The only other thing I want to do, I think, is cut a little, uh, cut a little. What you call it in here? Choil right here. I think that'd be cool. Anyway, that's what I was carrying today. What were you carrying? These are important questions. These are things I want to know. So tell me what you were carrying. Uh, I, I know a number of you have some pretty fantastic tastes and have some great knives, and uh, it's always fun to find out what other people have on them. Do you like, I carry two, my Birch Tree Blades Secant today. So good, yes. 
That is a beautiful knife. I was uh, admiring it on your Instagram page. Uh, I also, I love the shape of the handle and the blade of that thing. The whole thing is beautiful. Hey, Dave, how you doing? This old sword blade review. The Wee Pier Ostop Hell design today. I love Ostop Hell, along with oh, his designs. And he's a very nice guy. Uh, along with the Hogue compound out the front, Alan Elishowitz, which you just did a, uh, uh, I believe you just did a, a review of, or was that just the straight Bowie? But anyway, a beautiful looking uh, and uniquely handled um, out the front. Very cool. Uh, the Weep here. Can't remember which one that is. Rocks offed the Hogue Decca. Uh, Rocks, was that the drop point or the clip point? It's more of a clip point. Or was that the uh, that cool looking compound Warncliffe? I think that's uh, I, another knife. I can't believe I haven't gotten that one yet, but eventually I will. Addicted to EDC says, SOCOM Elite Blade Show American Made Knife of the Year and a Leatherman Free P4 and a Mini Freak. Yes. See? Okay. All right. So the SOCOM perhaps is what you were carrying. Well, just in case it went down and uh, you found yourself trapped in a building with a with a with a with a cadre of terrorists or something and then the uh the leatherman is well for everything and then the mini freak is in case you have to slice something i think that's a prudent and uh, a pretty good setup there alex had the we made burke blades sphinx sphinx which one is the sphinx um uh, i will i will look it up jamie what's the sphinx uh let's see FF Stinger. Oh, the Ferrum Forge Stinger. I like that knife. Ferrum, For Ferrum Forge blades, to me, I, I either really like them or kind of just, yeah. I mean, that, I, I haven't seen an ugly one, that's for sure. But that Stinger is right on. I like that design. Hollywood Tactical. How you doing, man? Uh, I just added the Topps Pry Bar Mini Crowbar to my EDC today. The Tops pry bar. I mean, which one? <laughs> that aren't all tops pry bars. I'm just kidding. I love those tops. Mm. I just replaced. Well, we'll get to that later. Warren Cliff. Okay. That is a really cool looking Warren Cliff. And it reminds me a bit of the uh Zero Tolerance 055 designed by Gus Cicini. Cicini. I, I never can remember how you pronounce his name, but a very cool. Uh, Revo Ness with carbon fiber. Revo is making some really cool. Stop it. I'm not saying cool anymore. Revo is making some very unique designs and unique in a way that resonate with me. That's what 12 words for cool. All right. There you go. Hey, Caleb. Uh, S B D E. Oh, sharp by design. Evo Typhoon and a surge bean cleaver. Ooh, we have an aristocrat with us. Hmm. So that sharp by design Evo, I've been seeing everyone who got uh, this recent, uh, you know, who, who got their typhoons uh, over this past week. And I got to say, I experienced something not often experienced. Um, I felt like uh, a bit of um, uh, FOMO, fear of missing out, I guess. Uh, that's what the kids say. Um because I think Alex loaned me this, and, and and now I really get what the deal is. And I mean, I, I knew from speaking with him and from hearing everyone else that I trust talk about how wonderful these knives are, but to have one in hand is something else. And uh, so watching everyone get their Evo Typhoons. Is that the one that came today? Or this week? It was, it was that, right? With the... Uh, well, correct me if I'm wrong, but the, the with that beautiful clip point blade, wow, gorgeous. And then the um, the knife nuts edition with the purple micarta denim, purple denim micarta, something like that. What? Vero Impulse Mini, Vero Engineering. I'm I, I keep hearing that I need to talk to him, and I I would love to actually. Um, EDC Tanto, is it a Tanto? I wonder. Uh, today, Benchmade Crooked River. Another knife that I got rid of and kind of regret, uh, Boker Squale. Now you're talking my language. And uh, the CRKT Obaki around my neck. So you had the Crooked River and the Squale, two like 3.9 inch blade bladed knives on you. Um, I'm assuming the Boker Squale, I, I think, I think th that was a typo on your part. Um, so I think you're carrying the Boker Squale, and if you're not, I will just pretend you are because that is, I have two Bokers, and that's one of them, and I think it's 
just an amazing knife. I think Charles Marlowe, um, if I could have any custom knife out there, it would be a, a custom Marlowe. Uh, the, uh, the Wallaby says, I got my Mora Eldris. I think you were carrying that last week, but my main blade today is my White River Firecraft. White River. Is that a fixed blade, sub four inch fixed blade that has gotten, um, that I've seen a lot around like over the past few years? I wonder. The Wallaby. Are you uh, um, in a environment, uh, perhaps in Australia or somewhere uh, in, in the region where knives play into your lifestyle in a realistic way? Uh, curious. Uh, John Evans says, office light day with the Kaiser Genie in carbon fiber, light, slim, and fidgety. Is that a, geez, I'm just sitting here to see, this is why I do this show, so I can find out all the stuff I don't know, which could fill a giant book. But the is this a um, Ray Laconico front flipper? Or am I thinking of something else? I, I'm probably thinking of something else. Slim and fidgety, nice, love it. Kaiser, man, Kaiser and Concept, Pretty impressed with concept. James Moore, latest knife, sharp eye design, Evo Typhoon, Bowie blade, marble carbon, carbon fiber scales. So this is the knife that I was just talking about. Yes, yes, I, I see, I see. And and this um, sharp eye design arch nemesis, uh, the feeling of how it breaks from the detent. And you know, if you know anything about his detent, it's uh, uniquely sculpted out of the titanium it is like a little ramp and all of the titanium on that face of the uh, lock bar that isn't that nub is milled away it's an expensive and difficult well i don't know how about difficult but it's an expensive and timely process uh carving out that detent as i remember him describing it and it feels differently it breaks away or it feels different when it breaks away it's uh I don't know if anyone else out there can describe it, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's, it's great. So I bet these typhoons are just amazingly killer. Got the Tepe Hornet 2 on the way. That will be my answer to the pocket check for next week's show. Uh, the Hornet 1 or the first Hornet, very cool. I love the scoops and swales cut out of the back of the blade. I am a sucker for that ever since the first time I saw a SOG, uh, Mac V SOG. Uh, Minnesota Knife Consumer says, I was able to snag the GEC 15 Tom's Choice Barlow in Rough Swan Osage. Uh, rough Sawn Osage. Nice from DLT Trading. <coughs> oh, Minnesota. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Uh, DLT. I love DLT Trading and they always have such great uh, things. But the Osage Orange and the Saw Cut and the Tom's Choice Barlow. And I have to say, the one reason I don't have FOMO about that fear of missing out on that Tom's Choice is that I. I am partial, or I, I should say impart, or I'm not crazy about uh, the spear point slash drop point blades, uh, especially if they don't have that sort of machine ground swedge and long pull. Uh, I, so that's how I justify not getting it, which is funny justifying not getting it. Hey, Bill, how you doing? Uh, I'm glad to see the Olight is in your rotation. That's right. You know where this li this lives in my backpack. And actually, I <laughs> I need to do an audit of my backpack because it's my everyday carry bag. And maybe I'll do a video of that and just because it's gotten ridiculously heavy. And that's what happens. And every once in a while, I have to go through and uh, get rid of it. Hey, Bob, I'm glad to see the Olight in your rotation pocket carry. My BGM knives. Oh, I like his knives. Pike Olight I5T Leatherman Wave. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Olight I5T and a Leatherman Wave. Hey, by the way, thanks for the shout out last week. Glad you're enjoying the Super 15. I love the Super 15. That might be one that I get um, rehandled, except for the fact that I'm weird about gift knives and I feel like I should leave that kind of pristine the way it came. Um, the B BGM now, correct me if I'm wrong, he's a young guy making some really cool uh, knives. Many of them, there I go with the cool, many of them handle wrapped beautifully. Uh, see, tomorrow I carry my new Sharp Eye Design Riot Made Typhoon in green micarta and damasteel blade. Mm, mm, mm. Alex, what? 
excuse me, why didn't you carry that today? Did that just arrive today? That's a that's a nice mail call, man. Hollywood Tactical, I studied in, in Deutschland and learned to use fountain pens, but stopped for a while, but got another one last year at Christmas. Okay, so since we're on the topic, and uh, this uh, pen is my EDC. This also rides in my bag in, in the same pocket with the Olight and several other pens and a Swiss Army knife and just like gum and that kind of stuff. This knife is the Safari and it's a fountain pen and it's 15 bucks. And this thing is bulletproof. And they made this originally for German school children. So it's really meant to withstand, you know, being not cared for, you know, it's a despised tool of a despised activity going to school or whatever. Uh, so it, it really does take punishment. And this one is not, uh, I bought one for my daughter. That's a glossier red, you know, you can get this in all different kinds of plastic colors and finishes. Um, it's just a great fountain pen, a little bit different of a nib than the Coico. The Coico has a slightly wider, flatter nib. So you get more of a fountain penny look in your, in your writing, if you will. Uh, but I mean, you get the beautiful pu little puddles of ink with this also. I love writing with fountain pens and I love the standard blue black ink, like that color. Mm. And I didn't realize it was a standard color. I used to mix my own blue and black together uh, in high school, maybe way back when they didn't have the technology to mix, to mix them in the, uh, Purple Alutex. Okay, Alutex. I'm, I'm assuming that's what that material is in the sharp eye design. Hey, Jake, how's it going? <laughs> Yo, Jake. I only have a few minutes, but I had to pop in. Great to have you. I was just uh, talking about various EDC uh, things, such as my Yojumbo and my pens. I want to find out what other things people consider essential EDC. And uh, to me, I love my pens but they have to be small and pocketable. Carried the Vero Axion and the Finch 1929 today. I love that Finch. I love the jig, the jig. You have the one with the jig bone, I believe. I love that. More makers need to be doing that. Brian Ty Compact Fighter, Ganzo 727S, Kershaw Almar Neck Knife. I didn't know they made an Almar Neck Knife. I know they did a couple of those little Almar uh, with the finger grooves. Damn autocorrect. Yes, Boker Squail. <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah. Autocorrect knows knives better than you, 86 Recon. Didn't you know that? Yeah, it's true. Uh, well, since we're talking about pens, let me let me show you one other that I really dig. And uh, Roxoff says, work from home now, so the Goff Resolute Mark III is always in my... Oh, 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 nice. Always by my computer. He was on the show... Man, what a meticulous process. What a meticulous knife maker that guy is. He was a he was a cool dude. I learned about him through Alex Tissot. This right here is Oh yeah, thank you, Michael. Hit 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 up the uh hit up the thumbs up, guys. Do it, guys. So right here this is a fountain pen. It's a Kuiko, a German company. And uh it's an awesome little fountain pen. This thing writes beautifully. And when we were homeschooling, uh, back, uh, before summer, um, this was the special pen, which resided on the special clipboard, which had all of the girls assignments on them. And so if the girls completed their thing, they got to go over and, and write down and check, check off. They got to use the special pen. I'm sure they destroyed the nip. No, they did. They did a fine job. Uh, but this thing is great and it's tiny. It writes, it writes like a big pen and it almost feels like a big pen. Uh, when in hand, but then it breaks down into this tiny little package here. Plus, you can get this in copper and brass, or is it just brass? But one of those beautiful patinaing metals. So anyone else out there into pens? Curious. And if so, any recommendations for really small pens? I also have a Fisher Space Pen that I carry all the time, but uh, that's upstairs. So let me know. Let me know how you feel about that. Okay, so let me let me tell you about. Let's see, Wolf Scout Five. Hey, all you knife junkies, custom ah oh, Pena Lanny's clip front flipper and a Birdvis Hitchcock. 
we have another aristocrat. I would love to get a Hitchcock. I shouldn't say I would love. I will love at some point to get a Hitchcock. Uh, that is just a, I love his work and I love his little work in progress wipes where he's finally finished shaping that handle out of whatever material. And then he wipes it with a bit of uh, uh, oil and it just, it transforms into a dusty looking thing into the, a beautiful, beautiful um, piece of artwork. Uh, I got my first CKF and Peter Resenti. Oh God. I, I love anything Peter Rosenti makes is just beautiful to me. Um, very nice. Chicago 23 ordered the land 710 titanium from Amazon land 710 titanium. I mean, AliExpress. <laughs> what, uh, what is the land 710? Do tell, uh, you guys like cheers where everyone, uh, you guys are like cheers, where everyone knows your name. Every person that gets on here <laughs> is like Norm, is like your Norm. Hey, Norm. Hey, Shredder. Hey, it's the guys from Shredder. Hey. Yeah, I love that show. Anyone trying to get the new Integral Vero isotope tomorrow? I definitely am. All right, so tell me, Max, what is the, uh, what's the process? Is this a drop? Are you going to be there with the, um, you know, hitting the refresh button? I've only done that really one time and it was for this the uh m4 version uh a blacked out m4 version of the exclusive yojimbo from from blade hq let me know puddles of ink is either what i get when my ballpoint leaks or is it the name of an 80s punk band puddles of ink is on the bass player for puddles of ink uh take a look at Diamond Oxford Blue Ink, which is my choice for a blue black ink. Hang on, Barry. Let me write that down. Actually, I've got nothing. I've got this to write it down on. This is pathetic. I have all this paper and none of it is right within reach. However, I do have a number of pens here I can draw upon. So let me see. So I, uh, I mentioned a couple of weeks back that my mom happened upon a, uh, uh, a, a Meisterstuch, a, um, what do you call it? Uh, a Mont Blanc Meisterstuch. Thank you for the tip, Barry. I appreciate it. Um, and she got it for a song, almost literally. Caleb says, I always have a small notebook with my tactical or tactile pen on me for quick math and dimensions needed on the job. Caleb, what are you an ar architect or are you a uh, construction worker? Are you a... Uh, builder of some sort or an engineer i'm curious that's cool that uh, you can actually bust out paper and do math when i struggle uh, to help my fifth grade daughter in her damn math class not damn it's a good math class because it's got me stymied i've been carrying the bastion pen i won in a giveaway from women carry knives now is the bastion is that a bolt pen those are cool i don't have any bolt pens i think i need one Hey, Professor EDC, good to have you here. Hey, everyone, Bob, Jim, hope all are doing well. Sorry I'm late. I'm doing well. Jim's doing well, I think. And uh, hey, it just occurs to me, uh, keep keep your eyes peeled for a pretty special interview coming up. It'll probably be, I think it'll be this Sunday, but uh, keep your ears peeled. It's a, it's going to be a cool one, a big one. Uh, zebra F701. I love that. I love the zebra pens for years and years. Those were my, those were my go-tos because I love, well, how well they write, how they never glop. They never like clot and they have a, gr and, and the metal barrel and then the small size. I love those, uh, those pens. Sorry, Jim. What was that last? Oh, coming up Sunday. You, uh, oh, uh, that's this Sunday is Dirk. Yes. I'm sorry. The Sunday after it's okay. I take it back. In two Sundays uh, will be that other one. Uh, for some reason, I was thinking Dirk was already out, and now it's out of the bag. A uh, real small pen would be the Fisher Space Pen Bullet. Yeah, I do love that. I have mine. I got it in the anodized black, hoping that it would wear and kind of look worn in real quickly. But I've had it for a long time, and I just carry it in my pocket. It's not like I. It's not like my pockets are lined with sandpaper so it's going to take forever for that thing to to weather the way i want michael says just ordered the schnitzel una 
Schnitzel Una, Unu in orange, a German designed small fixed blade with a blunted tip. $30. Plan on using it to try some mods. Oh, that's a good idea. Needs a point, a sharpening choil, and some thumb jimping. That's a great idea. Um, just to get a knife like that to to um to mod, uh, especially something without a point, if you want to make your own sort of profile there. Interesting thing will be uh it will be uh, I predict it will be easier for you to give that knife a point than it will be to give it jimping or a choil. That's just instinctual. I don't know. Machine Era has a nice brass pen that you can be. Oh, yeah. Machine Era. I think, uh, excuse me. Sorry. I think uh, Shabazz recently did uh, something on one of their small brass fountain pens. Essential EDC for me, two knives, Sharpie pen, five pack of gum. You're not kidding about the gum. You, you know, especially now, I mean, during these troubled times, wearing a mask all day long. I am when I'm at the office, I wear a mask a lot. And man, after lunch, it's like, oh yeah, you know, like I'm trapped in here with my own breath. So to have gum, to have uh, Altoids is a must. I've used fountain pens for 60 years. Pilot is my favorite brand, but you need to get... A TWSBI Echo Piston Fill. Now, Barry, is this a big purchase? I'm curious. And uh, not that I would be turned off if it were, but it's something I would have to uh, I would have to save up for and, and do some research on. If it's a if it's a lesser cost, then I would just boom, get it. Uh, piston fill. So I had a bunch of old German fountain pens that used to work that have uh, that have since gone gone the way of uh gone the way of the dodo caleb says i grabbed a tactical turn pen when they were doing the damasteel bolts in my opinion they look better than timascus i ha i'm not sure if i've seen either of them but i would just guess from what you were saying that i agree gave my brother a tactile tactile turn bolt action pen as a gift but don't have one myself huh <laughs> God, I just had a terrible thought and I'm not even going to express it. But that's cool. That is a, that's a brother. That's what a brother does. Hollywood Tactical says, the land is that San Renmu made supposed. Oh, yes. Right. The one that, um, Nothing Fancy did a, did a review on several years back. Hey, what's going on, Brian? Good to have you here, sir. Hello, hello. Nice to have you as always. Big Boar says, good evening, everyone. Good evening, sir. And you have, cheers, you have two two glasses there. <sighs> have one for me. I like pens. I've been a Fellholter, I've been on a Fellholter kick lately. Uh, they're my don't get into watches, but pens. Yeah, right, exactly. Because pens are not inexpensive either. I know they're not, uh, definitely not up in that rarefied air of watches. They don't, I mean, watches, they, they, the sky's the limit, kind of literally. Tactile turn or yeah, tactile turn plans are just fantastic. Is that the one you've been carrying recently that I've been seeing in uh, in your uh, in your pictures, your your IG pictures? I'm a machinist and a graphene maker. Graphene maker, a machinist. Caleb, you should be making knives. Are you? Uh, and you're like, don't tell me what to do. What's a graphene maker? Let me let, let me know. Always bought the German Ro Roach Ring brand. They're, they make great pencils, too. I don't think I've ever had a pen of theirs, but they make really excellent drafting pencils and uh, actually drafting um, equipment and tools and stuff. Wallaby. Sorry, guys. I got to get up early in the morning or early tomorrow. Thanks for the live, Bob and Jim. I promise I'll stay to the end on the next one. Wallaby, thanks for dropping in, man. It's always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. Take care and sleep well. Oh, God, not the warning. Oh, it's awesome. We had a great conversation. I, and I was hoping it was going to be a surprise, and I just... Machine Era is great as well. Yeah. At Rockstar. Uh, yeah. Um, everyone keeps mentioning that. Barry Levitt, 31. Oh, Barry. Oh, <laughs> cool. The TWSB1 Echo is $31. That is a... That will be a tonight purchase. I'm I'm thinking about it's funny because I don't I've gotten to the point and tell me if anyone else feels this way 
And and it, it, it's it's a little counterintuitive. Well, it, it maybe it's why I call myself junkie, but um, I I've gotten to the point where you know spending a certain amount of money uh, is <laughs> definitely. Uh, um, I got a very cool knife. Okay, so definitely our type of people. So the tactile turn uh, people. Uh, what was I saying? Okay. I think very little about dropping a certain amount of money for a knife. Let's let's say two hundred dollars. Um, I think very little about that, and that of course is uh, something that has progressed. I remember ten years ago. I remember it was ten years ago because it was kind of like when we first moved into this house. It was like sixty dollar knife was like, you know, I, I'm gonna get one, and you know, I, I had a couple of expensive knives and. Uh, and but just things were different for me, you know. We had just moved here, and we were fresh in our new jobs, and we had a new child, and all this stuff. And it was not the time to be, sp but you know, things change and things evolve. And my my collecting habit has evolved and changed to the point where, yeah, I don't I don't think much about dropping two hundred bucks on a knife. But there's a pair of two hundred dollar boots I want to get. These, uh, you know, just rugged boots that i want and i'm like 200 bucks uh go to goulet or goulette pens to purchase they also have ink sample samples that's cool hey thank you barry for these tips i really appreciate this um because i feel like you can scratch the pen itch uh if you're not a connoisseur which i am not you can scratch the pen itch for relatively inexpensively. And, and it seems like there's a pretty wide selection of reasonably priced things out there. Graphene is a single atom layer of carbon. Holy crap. Uh, it's amazing stuff, but very difficult to manufacture on a large scale with good quality. Well, I can't imagine why. I mean, it's only a single layer, uh, a single atom layer. So what is the use of that? Or would you have to shoot me if you told me? That's pretty amazing, man. That's got to be painstaking work, man. Uh, the, the TWSBI Echo has a lot of options for different nib sizes and, price, and priced nicely. This is the Echo. So am I saying it right? Is it TWSBI or, or, or is it like tw Twisby or something? Um, okay, Echo. Oh, yeah. I, I wrote that one down. All right. No more writing down. I can always go back and look at these. Bob, you two reviews for the... Okay, I will check them out. I will check them out. That's what I do for every purchase now is YouTube reviews. That's just how I go. All right, so I would like to... Uh, I would like to, before we get into the state of the collection, because I have, I have a couple of things I want to show off, and one of them, they're all awesome. They're all awesome. Who am I fooling? But before we get to there, I, I, need, to, uh, I need to just say that if you want to help support the Knife Junkie podcast, Consider checking out what you get as a patron of the show on Patreon. There are three levels of support. And uh, for your patronage, you get the Knife, uh, knife Junkie stickers, a mention on the podcast, early access to the Sunday interview show, and the midweek supplemental podcast with no ads during the show. There's one at the top. And at the top tier of support, you get automatically entered into a uh, uh, monthly knife giveaway. Your support helps fund the infrastructure needs of the show, hosting, servers, apps, and equipment, and eventually it will help fund the purchase of knives that I will get for your edification that I will show to you. And then uh, uh, knives purchased with with Patreon funding will, well, you know what, maybe I shouldn't say that, but most of them will get sold and donated. Uh, so check out our Patreon membership and uh, see what helping us will get you. Quickest way to do it is to go to thenifejunkie.com slash patreon and uh that will take you where you need to go thank you for your support now let's move on to the state of the collection shall we all right let me just click on my list so we can see twisby is how i usually hear it okay i knew i mean no one's gonna sit there and say t-s-w-b-i it's just too much graphene is super strong material a bit a bit super light also. So this this has all sorts of probably aerospace kind of applications and that kind of thing. All right. So very, very pleased with a, um, it's not an impulse purchase. It's something I've been looking at for a long time. 
uh, it's right here, but I wanted to find the case. It came in a cool case. Uh, but uh, it's from a designer that I really like that I've been following on Instagram. He's a French guy. K Max Rom, and he's had a bunch of knives produced by different makers, and these, uh, his latest, are the the Pelicans that are coming out by Concept, and I got this a uh, couple weeks ago. I went on a small knife tear. I was like, I, I haven't checked in with the three inches in a little while, so I got this, and I got the CRKT Pilar three. I got a new handle, a titanium handle for my Delica Warncliffe. And just kind of, uh, and, and oh, and uh, well, something else that you'll see in a moment that I just got today, um, just to kind of reconnect with the three inch knives, because uh, to me, um, to me, it's like, you know, three and a half and up or three and below. It's that, that three to three and a half is the, is the area. Hey, Mark, good to have you here, sir. Is that area that I lose interest. So uh, I really do like the big ones. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Like I designed it. I agree. Uh, the Pelican does look awesome. And so this is the Tanto version. Very, very sharp and sweet. Yeah, this this might be up your alley, Alex. Bob has great taste. Well, thank you, sir. <laughs> yeah, K Max Rom's knives are really, really cool. Uh, I like the curve on the top, too. I mean, it it is a very super ergonomic pleasing uh knife and blade here um this not for nothing this little thumb ramp is really nice i'm kind of over thumb ramps a bit but this is a very nice one and um, my hands which medium gloves are pretty much uh what i wear so my my medium size hands fit on there just fine and uh it also comes in a what do you call it i don't know exactly what the hell it is but it's a a full belly. I guess it's technically a drop point or maybe it's a clip point, but it's like it's got a full belly instead of this sort of tanto thing. And the point is located more, the point is more aligned with the pivot than the spine. And it is also a beautiful version and I would like to get that. I feel like a jerk. Hi, Jim. <laughs> Why? You're not a jerk. Come on, guys. Uh, yeah, so this thing is on bearings and small and adorable and it's what is this s35 vn and it's titanium and i i haven't gotten a black titanium knife in a while and i look forward to this thing wearing like the clip already has this is from leaning up against the kitchen counter and i gotta say it's like nails on a chalkboard when i do that but uh i don't mind the result very very sharp and thin uh, Stasa, Nick has a great, uh, Stasa 23 has a great video on that knife and I will too soon. I'm going to put that up there. So that's the, that's one recent, uh, acquisition since last we spoke here. Another, well, you know, uh, I talked about this last week, I think. So I'll just put this in here next to it. This is the, uh, CRKT Pilar three. Okay. So check this one out. Well, I'll do that one last. This one is also a three inch. Uh, knife that uh, Mr. Doug Ritter sent me, and what a beautiful, awesome little knife this is. This is the Mini RSK1, made by Hogue, designed by Doug Ritter, and uh, you know it's a it's a Hogue made Mini Ritter grip, <laughs> with all all that that implies. This they call G Mascus, I believe. It's layered black, purple, and white um, G10. And when it's milled and contoured, as this knife is, if you look at it on this axis, you'll see it's nicely contoured, which makes it very comfortable in hand. And if you look at it on the side, you can see the different layers. But when you uh, when you mill it out, you get that sort of wood pattern. And then uh, emblematic or signature style for. Um, for these latest, the latest iteration of Doug's knives is this sort of radiating starburst or sunburst pattern that radiates from the um, from the pivot. Great knife, just got it today. Uh, but I used it to, to cut open that uh, that that really thin and nasty cellophane that you sometimes get on well broccolini, and uh, it sliced right through it like it wasn't there. Usually, there's a grab there. Tri-State EDC. By the way, Tri-State, I'm from Cuyahoga County. 
Uh, I still haven't gotten my hands on a Ritter Hogue. It's been in my cart for months. Pull the trigger, my man, because you know what will happen is they will sell out, and then it will be even longer. And and you know you'll have to wait even longer because <clears throat> they're not on a continuous thing. Uh, I'm gonna get one. You should. You should. I think you're talking about the concept, uh, but they're not on a continuous uh, um, production thing. So I think you should. Uh, you should get one. Do it. Everyone loves them, and I think you will too. Neve, Jared, Kara, yo, how's everyone doing tonight? Thank you so much. That's awesome. So uh, Jared, as I mentioned before, uh, you all know that he's an awesome sharpener because I'm sure you all watch his videos. But uh, I know uh, firsthand because he has uh, he sharpened my, my <laughs> he fixed the tip and sharpened my uh, XM18 Warncliffe. And that thing is made of M390, and he did it all by hand and made it look like it just came off the factory floor. Now I sent him, uh, now he has in his possession and his finished sharpening, <clears throat> my Sebenza, which I also broke the tip, or just a tiny bit. So he fixed that. But also I asked for a mirror polish, and he sent me a video today. And, oh, my God, it just looks beautiful. That knife, uh, the Sebenza is such an incredible knife. And I have the, the classic 21 with my Carta. And I never, ever felt like I got it sharp enough. I mean, I got it sharp, but I wanted, I wanted Jared to really... <clears throat> I wanted Jared to really make it a razor blade, so I can't wait to get that. And then he also, uh, uh, I dropped my Yo Jumbo uh, 20 CV tip first, of course. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And uh, uh, yeah, he fixed the tip of that and uh, just polished that up and sharpened it, so I can't wait to get that stuff back. So anyway, thank you, Jared and, and, and Kara, and guys, definitely check out their channel. Uh, Neves knives, but also, man, send Jared a knife or two to have him sharpen. Uh, you know, assuming he's taking the business, because oh my god, hey Deadpool Lee, good to have you. Both came out fantastic. Yeah, I can't wait, can't wait. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Uh, so let me get to this. Uh, let me get to this last one here. Um, a uh, video of this is coming out on Saturday, but. Oh, so happy. So pleased. So I, I'm just going to start off by saying uh, the day I bought this, I was like, I'd been thinking about this knife for a while and uh, really wanting it. But there were many things holding me back, chief among them, the price. Uh, but, you know, the, the price, the price over the practicality, I guess I should say. But <clears throat> I went on to uh, the knife exchange, uh, knife forums, and I said, if I find this knife just by chance, I'm going to buy it today, right now. And what happens? I go to Fixed Blades. Boom. The very first entry is this knife and also at a price that I could not resist. So here it is. <clears throat> this is my new Spartan Harzy Dagger. And uh, here, I'm going to clear the field here just for this because this is a... Uh, Always need the business, says Jared. So yeah, definitely hit up Jared, send him some knives, his his sharpen and and also before you do that, watch some of his videos, how he sharpens these things. It's amazing. It's all hand done. And 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 before you even watch the videos, listen to the podcast. I had uh, I had him on the show and we talked a lot about his process. So definitely check him out and check out their channel. So uh yeah. Spartan Harzy Dagger, Michael Morgan. Is that for this? What, this little thing? Yeah, yeah. So let me put it down here. Uh, as you know, recently I, I had uh, I had um, Spartan 100%. Couldn't agree more. Recently I had Les George on the show, and he showed off and talked about his dagger uh, with Spartan, the V14, I think it is. Man, oh, God. So that that... I love that knife, but this one was the first one I wanted to get because to me, it's just something I could look at all day. As a matter of fact, I'm going to do something here. Hang on a sec. So I was at a definite dagger deficit here and really needed to do something responsible about it. And so, you know, I solved this problem. But here, sorry, all of that was just to do this. So you can really, really gauge, really take a look at that profile. I mean, 
Am I the only one? I mean, I know a lot of people are, there aren't too many, I should say, a lot more people are into folders and maybe not so interested in fixed blades, but but even those who aren't interested in buying or collecting, you got to look at that thing and just, I mean, that is the classic fighting dagger. Like you expect to see that in a logo, like a special forces logo. And, uh, you know, it's not, uh, it's not a crazy thing to think because, uh, William Harsey, Bill Harsey has been making knives for special forces guys for a long time. So I know he took a long time to design this knife. Yes, I agree. You really cannot. Everything he designs is cool. Even the, uh, like the Gerber, uh, rock knife, you know, like, very inexpensive knives that he's designed are, are also just amazing uh, to look at anyway. Can he fix my Gerber Sedulo? The grind is awful. I'm betting he can. I mean, I don't mean to speak for the man, but he he's very good with a sharpening stone. What was that last one, Jim? I love a good dagger, but have no use for the... I mean, yeah, no, me too. But if I'm honest... I, I have no use for most of my collection. I mean, I do technically. I can carry every almost. I can carry all of my folders, but that doesn't mean I'm going to use them necessarily. This, I suppose. Hey, monster! Great to have you here. Showing off my, 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 my very psyched about purchase. Set the sharp eye design next to that puppy. Yes, yes, you're right. I I brought it out for that reason. Oh, where is it? I've I've lost the sharp. No, I'm just kidding. Not even a not even a funny joke. All right. Oh, look at that. So to me, there's something about the symmetry of both of these designs. I mean, when I've said it many times, hey David, good to have you here, David Iverson. Um, last week when I brought this out, and every time I mention this. Nice knives. Have a happy weekend. Have a happy weekend eve, kids. So this, uh, yeah, weekend eve. It's it's like the weekend is for amateurs, but Thursday night, yeah, for the real ones. Every time I've uh, looked at the arch nemesis, I've commented on how it's the perfect folder because it is. You look at it, it's perfect. It's got a perfect blade to handle ratio. It's perfectly symmetrical. It's beautifully, beautifully designed and perfectly executed. I like the look for daggers, but it's more of an assassin's knife more than fighting knife yeah but people there you can get this 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 is i hear you i hear you but here's my case i definitely bet he could here here's my case this thing is hollow ground and it has a decent belly so i still think you could you could slash with this oh and the drywall knife i think that's a good idea and since i'm up all right that's all right oh man 24.99 nice knives thank you so much no i'm sorry noise knives thank you so much that is i'm very grateful thank you wow that's awesome you guys rock all right so oh i'm sorry i'm sorry that was unnecessary all right, so here it is next to the Klein. It's not a drywall knife. It's a um, flexible, um, uh, like metal, flexible metal, uh, air, um, like AC conduit knife, something like that for ripping through metal and stuff. And here, I'm going to carefully and gingerly remove this. This is great. This is great. I love that you have to worry about not getting cut when you close it. To me, that's... That's special. You need an EOS Thresher in that dagger mix. EOS Thresher. Because right now I'm thinking of the... Oh, I know what you mean. Yes, I do. Yes, I do indeed. Uh, if you want to help me with that, <laughs> please. Uh, and here it is next to the Topps Razor's Edge, or uh, Ranger Edge. Now, you can see it especially well here. But also uh, knives like the um, Cold Steel Taipan and the Gerber Mark II, which is a classic dagger. And I, I will show you my Gerber Mark II in a second. But they have belly. Uh, you know, you, you look here. This is belly on both edges. So it's not just a stiletto 
with with a point for thrusting you can get some some cutty slashy action with that yes hvac flex duck knife right thank you argon knife guy i think you're the guy who uh, corrected me last time i appreciate that uh the closest thing i got to a dagger is the oh uh cold steel gladius machete Woo, nice nice that's a big dagger with a triangular tip so now check this out okay so this i have a gerber mark ii which is a legendary fighting dagger design uh, designed by an army uh, uh, vet in the 60s, I think. And it was a, it was a knife that was favored by the SOG uh, guys and uh, um, different from the Bowie, the classic SOG Bowie. And it's this knife, but you'll see that... Uh, Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Here, let me let me do a, a close flyby. This is sculpted G10. But and it's full tang, and you can see you can see the tang protrudes at the end in a little, you know, in a in a skull crusher here. But these scales aren't just sitting. They don't just meet here and sit on top. They 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 actually like slide onto the tang, and slide onto the tang, and then they're bolted through. So you got this beautiful texture here, great texture, and then you have jimping at the pinch point there. You got, it's like wasp wasted here, and then you turn it on its side, and then you got the coke bottle. I mean, it feels really it feels as good in hand as you might expect just from looking at it. Um, uh, not too, you know, it's oval in cross section, not circular like the, like the Fairbairn Sykes, a circular blade. Un unless you have your thumb on the flat of the blade, you're never exactly quite sure of its orientation. If you're, if it's, you know, if you have your dagger out, it's probably not because things are going well. So that's, that's the kind of time you, you, you might be distracted enough to not be sure what the orientation of your blade is. So that's why it's better to have an oval handle. And it's also not going to twist in use. Uh, damn it, Bob. No, I want more daggers. Well, Caleb, I think this is a good night for you because it's pointing out a glaring hole in your collection that must be filled. That's a comfy looking handle. It really is. And not for nothing, the, the Les George Spartan dagger, which is, a, I think, an inch longer than this or three quarters of an inch longer in blade length. Also, it looks like it has a tremendous uh, ergonomic handle. The belly on that tops dagger is gorgeous. Yeah, this is a nice knife. It is it is heavy. Uh, I'm I've never taken the uh, handles off of this. Um, it is heavy. You could do some reduction just in the slabs of micarta, which are giant, thick, dense um, linen micarta. If you went with canvas, I'm not sure if canvas is any lighter. I think that's just perception to me. But if you went with canvas, made it thinner, and then did some carving like the Rocky Mountain tread make it a little bit lighter but the balance on this knife is great so yeah ranger's edge is a good knife i'm gonna do, i'm gonna continue to do this flyby and then i'm gonna show you my gerber mark ii uh, gerber has made some great fixed blades but not too many great folders yeah yeah i cannot disagree with you simply awesome i i would say thank you but i had nothing to do with producing this thing i just spent the money on it so really nice thank you michael <laughs> all right so uh, uh, which is just what I was saying. Why Why should I say thank you? I did not build this thing, but uh, thank you for approving of my taste, I guess. Um, what a great cross guard. Very stout. I love the, the angle. Here on the uh, Tang, you'll see the Spartan logo. And then to the right, you'll see, you'll see a little maker's mark, that triangular maker's mark of... Uh, William Harsey, and if you look really close, like through a magnifying glass, which I don't have around me, uh, you can see that that's an evergreen tree. Um, Bill Harsey grew up in a logging family. He grew up like logging and fixing machines for loggers, and he was around the logging industry. And uh, also, he designs all of his knives by hand and is an extra, oh yeah, well, we'll talk about that in a second. Leave that up, please. And uh, he's an extremely talented draftsman. He does all of his 
all of the designs for his knives in production by hand and has a, uh, you know, CAD people guys, uh, CAD guys take a look at it, look at his, you know, just pop it in the computer and it's all good to go. But he also does fine art and he does these beautiful drawings of, of uh, giant uh, coniferous trees. And um, so that's what this is. It's a tree. <laughs> beautiful six inch blade. Let me just uh, complete this, this quick flyby here. And that blade with the rigid center, you know, you've got this full width of the blade to about there. And then you have the taper. So this is a pretty stout, stout uh, thrusting tip. But you've, you've got some, you've got some uh, nice uh, hollow ground bevels there and you're good to go. I'm a huge, huge, huge fan of this knife. And Caleb said he likes the, uh, he's partial to the Les George. He loves the long fuller down the blade. Yeah, I'm going to have to get that one just, you know, for science so that I can compare uh, the two and really, really know which is the superior dagger. Or if it's a tie, that would be lovely. A tie would mean that I could hold on to both guilt-free. Tim says, do you see the daggers Alan Lishwitz is working on? Yes, yes, they are very cool. And, uh, God, yes, they are very unique and uh, classy and artful looking. Big Boar says, I've destroyed many Gerber Mark IIs. They tend to snap at the serrations. Okay, thanks. I am... I just forgot about that. Uh, let me show you this Gerber Mark II. Now, this one was purchased by my mother, whom I love dearly, in 1988 or 89. I think it was my senior year of high school. And it was uh, they were selling these in the Sharper Image catalog. I was like, oh, my God. Uh, so here it is. Here it is in the sheath. And you'll notice that the stitching in the sheath is red and I'll, I'll show you, I'll show you why, but the stitching over here is white. Let's see. Anyway, let me show you why. This is, this is my, <laughs> Jesus, excuse my French, but I, okay. So this is my Gerber Mark II. And uh, as you can see, uh, it's rusty. I have never, ever, this is going to be, an, I'm going to try it again. I have never been able to keep this thing rust free, ever. Uh, I, when I when it was in my, I lost the quillion here because a martial arts teacher was showing me how to throw knives and uh, it broke right off. Uh, it's cast aluminum, I guess, but I love this knife. I love the profile of the knife. I think I first saw this knife in the movie Aliens uh, uh, when the, when the, when the, uh, I know, <laughs> I know. When the when the guy does the thing where he flip, where the robot does the thing where he flips around in his hand and then he he does the the finger game, I, isn't this hilarious? I mean, I've okay, I've done a lot of things to this, like where I've you know d done all sorts of polishing and oiling and and it just rusts. I don't know. So I've just kind of gave up on it, but I'm never going to get rid of it. But uh, I, I will try flits because. Uh, Flitz has come into my life since the last time I tried this. And uh, I just don't know. I mean, it's amazing how rusty it is. I, I can't imagine what steel they were using in the late 80s that that's, this is what happened. I remember feeling burned that this quillion came pop flying off because at the time this was my prized uh, prized knife. Um, and that that came off after throwing it one time and I was like, why am I throwing this knife? That was stupid. Is that spice? Yeah. I was out, uh, harvesting saffron. It's a very, very labor intensive process. So I decided to bring my Gerber Mark II. Now my hands smell like oxidation. Weren't they made by Explorer at that point? At one point that would explain it, Sean, that would explain it. However, I had a bunch of explorers, uh, in the days leading up to getting this Gerber, you know, as a as a middle schooler and high schooler, I had a couple of uh, Explorer brand. Uh, uh, <laughs> that's some beautiful patina. Uh, um, I had some survival knives and stuff like that from Explorer, and none of them did this. I don't know what what they made it out of. I mean, I, I've had plenty of Pakistani knives, never did that. 
the paprika junkie. <laughs> yeah. Don't. Yeah. Yeah. Don't make me show you my knives. They're all covered with paprika, man. Bob, polish that down and apply frog lube generously. I think also I'm, I just won't put it back in that sheath. I think the sheath is haunted and I think the blade is not the best steel and together it's not a good combination. So you're saying sand it down and frog lube. I don't have frog lube. I'll check it out. Frog lube. I've gotten a lot of good tips on this show tonight. Thank you. And I think if I do that, I might just go the extra mile and remove this quillion and polish them, you know, sand down the edges and, and try and try and bring this thing back to life. My good buddy, Mike growing up had uh, a, a version of this knife, uh, but his was all blacked out and camoed out and it never, it, it's always, it's been fine. All these years later, it's been fine. So yeah, that's my dagger collection. It is, I don't want to say meager because the representatives that I have are pretty amazing, but I haven't gone down the dagger hole like I have, like I did the Bowie hole. Um, and that's another hole I might just be going down again because uh, uh, Bark River Knives just came out with their Boon 2. And I had one on reserve over at Knives Ship Free. And they just sent me that email saying, hey, remember when you uh, when you signed up for this? Well, it's here. You got two weeks. So I think I'll be getting that, um, you know, for the show. So I was going to talk a bit about the new SOG knives that came out. Um, eh, but eh, I mean, actually, they are pretty cool. I got to say, actually, Jim, will you, will you bring up the uh, just that SOG article real quick? I just want to just want to breeze through these quickly because they're actually kind of cool. Um, you know, SOG, uh, they've been around a long time. They've had a quite a powerful rebranding and, uh, they've been putting out some pretty fine knives with the exception of that gold bladed terminus. I just don't like that look, but I mean, the terminus is a, is a pretty good knife. So, um, but they came out with three, they're coming out with three new sort of series or lines. Uh, the um, LTE line, which is which LTE presumably stands for light, uh, even though there's no real E in the word light, but uh, maybe if you spell it L-I-T-E, like in that marketing way. And the reason I'm presuming that L LTE stands for light is because the liners are made from carbon fiber. They did this on the Kiku XR, great little knife. And uh, what else? I think they're doing it on the Terminus. And uh, so it'll be lined. Uh, it will have liners, rigid liners under the scales. They just won't be steel. They'll be much lighter carbon fiber. And if you have the Kiku XR, which I do, and I know uh, Peter from uh, Therapeutic Edge loves his, it's a great knife. It is a bit of a chunker. It's, it's not only big and broad and just kind of, you know, bulky, but it's also pretty heavy. So uh, that carbon fiber liner change, I think is a welcome one. Uh, more exciting to me is uh, the Pentagon series. We're talking about daggers. Uh, the Pentagon is a long standing SOG, um, uh, what do you call it? Standby, not standby. It's, it's, it's a design that's been with SOG for a long time and it's a dagger. And uh, there's a boot dagger version of it. And then there's the folding dagger shaped blade, single edged except at the very tip, you know, uh, SOG does that. They sharpen just the very tip. It's cool. I like it. Uh, but so here is their revamped Pentagon, and they, they have it in two sizes now. This is like a four and three quarters inch that you're seeing. And then uh, down below, there's one that's, I think, three and a half inches. But just a nice looking, uh, both of these daggers, uh, especially the longer bladed one, just look look nice. I mean, it's hard to go wrong with a dagger. You know, it's that something about that symmetry, as I mentioned before, is pleasing. Uh, but this one, I like the simplicity of the handle. I like the shape of the handle, that sort of flat, uh, flat, almost rectangular or octagonal shape in cross section. Uh, it's not going to turn in your hand. I really like that. I like the double quillions. It, it, it does stick in my craw when I see daggers, uh, which are so obviously for thrusting without quillions. It's like, are you, are you trying to cut my hand? 
Uh, I thought SOG LTE versions were going to be cheaper. They definitely are not. Well, you know, I guess they can say, well, it's carbon fiber now instead of steel. And we all know how expensive carbon fiber is. Uh, the Kiku is kind of awesome. I agree. The new SOG OTF looks amazing. Yes. So that new SOG OTF is in this Pentagon line. Jim, would you scroll down, sir? I believe it's uh, yeah, SOG OTF. Yeah, 380. Now keep going. That's the little covert version. There it is. That thing looks awesome. So that's the uh, that's the clip side. And then I believe the actuator, well, I know the actuator or whatever the slide thing is called, um, is on the other side. And I think if you scroll down, they have a view of that also. SOG has done a great job with the XR lock. I agree. Uh, I had SOG TAC XR before my collection was stolen. Oh! Oh, I sorry that hurts, man. Uh, these are automatics. The SOG TAC automatic. There, they have a little Cali automatic. A little. Uh, so that's their AU line. AU presumably standing for automatic monster. I'm sorry, man. I don't mean to get angry and indignant on your behalf. I'm sure you've worked through the stolen collection at this point, but man, that just that bums me out. SOG with the screwdriver handles. Ooh, was that a diss or do you love screwdrivers? Actually, Jim, go up uh, if you don't mind. Uh, let's look at that dagger again, that dagger handle. I think that's what he's referring to. Yeah. Yeah. Screwdriver handle. That's funny. Uh, okay, so uh, what do you think of these? I, I definitely know I like the large Pentagon, that right there that we're looking at. We would definitely get that. Uh, the out the front, I would definitely get that. Uh, those automatics also look great. I mean, these all look good to me. Uh, the, the, the least interesting by far are the LTEs. I, I just don't care too much about poor man's deadlock. I just don't care much about the, uh, the, um, the lightness or the carbon fiber, um, but it uh, carbon fiber liners, but it's a good gimmick for sure. And, and quite probably, quite possibly a, a really good, uh, 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 engineering choice. Mm. Ah, so good. So good. So cold. Uh, and then the last thing I wanted to talk about, little uh, little news, uh, their version of the Benchmade Infidel, right, with the switch on the on the front. Sog said no blade play on the out the front. If that's true, that's impressive. Hmm, I wonder if they hired the Hawks. I I you know what I would have to see it to believe it because you have to have a little. Trust me, it angers me daily. Ah, oh, I'm sorry, man. To make it worse, they got my. Yeah, man. That sucks. Uh. Someone stealing my collection is one of my biggest fears. Me too. I'm like, you know, someone could walk in here and, s and see like tool chests and think I need tools for work and or I could sell these tools and then they open it up. I imagine this whole thing. They open up the case and they're like, holy, oh my God. Like sudden, like, like, mm, just like making it like 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 just an an immediate initiation into the knife hobby with like some of the finest yeah i mean it burns me up thinking about your experience it burns me up thinking about an experience that hasn't happened to me yet or at all knock on wood um that's just that's terrible i i don't like criminals or i don't like people who take stuff that isn't theirs i think that they should be punished and that's all i'm going to say about that mora celebrates 130 years making knives in sweden with their new 2000 model now the 2000 model came out in the early 90s but it's been their biggest um biggest and most uh, what do you want to call it it's been their biggest seller this thing was made by or or was suggested by a, a moose hunter who suggested that Mora Knife create a knife that was adequate for all tasks at the, you know, on the hunt. So, so you could, you could actually uh, skin a moose with that thing, which I would imagine, I don't know, I've never, I've never skinned any animal, but I would imagine a moose is particularly labor intensive. Let's just put it that way. So uh, a, a hunter requested from Mora that they make a, uh, a, a knife 
that could do both skinning of big game, but also cut sausages, cheese, and the loaf uh, during the, the, the break. And this was the knife they came up with. Now, Mora is 130 years old, and they are uh, celebrating it with a commemorative. Uh, oh, I like that close-up of, of the texture there. And uh, so this is their commemorative model. Now you look at the writing on the, the commemorative writing on the blade and it's very understated. It's like, yes, 1891 to uh, 2021, you do the math. It's like, do it for me, man. What is that? 120, 130, 130 years. But uh, compound ground, uh, you got the thinner portion up front for the lighter, slicier tasks. And then of course, in the back, you have the, more obtuse angle and uh well that gives you uh more material uh behind that scanty ground edge that you can horse on things really really bear down on things and uh have that nice thick grind in the back so all you mora fans all you mora lovers uh put down the eldris and pick yourself up a two no uh, put the eldris around your neck and put the 2000 on your belt uh, I only have one Mora, and I think I need to change that. I, I have the, the Mora number two model, I think. Thank you, Bob. I appreciate that. Uh, I have the number two model. It's like old-fashioned with the wooden handle. I think I need to get a modern Mora just to have it. Now they all get taken to the pawn shop and sold for like a fifth of their value. Caleb. Caleb. Yes, you're right. You're right. Truth comes stomping in. That's true. That's, I'm sure that's what happens. And then it's they're they're sold for pennies on the dollar, and and then crack is bought or meth or something. Uh, as an insurance agent by day, I can tell you my collection is listed on a separate jewelry collectibles rider on my home insurance, zero deductible. <laughs> That's a good idea. Separate jewelry and collectibles rider on my home insurance. I know that we had so since we did our home insurance, my collection has grown. I know I have to. I have to get on there and up up my uh, my estimate because I remember filling something out about that too, and and thinking you know I had to protect my cold steel collection which I do but it's grown substantially from there. Mm. So tonight's knife fight is apropos to this uh, dagger conversation. I'm going to get rid of not get rid of but I'm going to move the rusty old Mark II and throw away this paper that so comically is festooned with the red kind of bad rust type stuff. And I'm gonna tell you about this knife fight. So the knife fight is Tanto versus Dagger. And I'm calling this a penetrator's paradise because we always talk about daggers as thrusting weapons. And then we also talk about how um, Tantos and damn it, I have a dr oh here we'll use this Tanto right here, and and then we talk about how Tantos are such great penetrators. You know, with that tip, you've got the triangular tip, and then all of the beef behind that tip. So, so it's it's two different concepts. It's like you've got the tiny, tiny, thin, acute tip to slip between the atoms of your adversary, and then you have the big, thick, triangular tip which is uh, backed with a lot of material to sort of uh, barge its way through the material. So that's our knife fight tonight. Dagger versus Tanto. Now, I think I pretty much know the answer, but uh, I'll, I'll give it a minute. If anyone wants to come on here and argue, maybe, uh, maybe EDC Tanto, uh, I'm sorry, what's his name again? Tanto EDC. Uh, maybe he wants to come on. I know he loves the Tanto. Um, I don't know. I'm sitting here looking at them, and I think that the dagger could do everything that the Tanto purports to do. Um, but I don't know. We'll we'll find out in just a minute. So that's the knife fight for this week. Tanto versus dagger. It's a penetrator's paradise. Is there truly a difference in penetration? I will guarantee that a good da dagger wins every time. All right. Well, so the, let, let's get into this. I, I have no idea, but I will pretend like I do in just a moment. Mm, mm, mm. 
cool, clear water. All right. So this is going to be me against me yet again. It's lonely. It's a lonely place to be here debating myself. It's a lonely place, this penetrator's paradise. All right, looks like no one's coming on, so I'm going to start. So I will start with, I will start with the Tanto. I'll remove this, put it over to the side. All right, Bob versus Bob again. I pick Bob. See, that's that's how you can guarantee your own your own win. All right, there we have it. Okay, and I'm going to give myself a minute, starting now. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for this invitation to this esteemed venue for this debate on what is the better penetrator, Tanto or Dagger? Well, I have uh, I have a number of ideas myself, but I'm going to let history tell the tale. And, and that is, Daggers have been around, and they haven't gone anywhere, really, uh, since they were created way, way, way back when daggers have always been with us. The Tanto on the other hand is something that was, um, that was created by a certain culture. Well, by the, by the, uh, by the Japanese and it remained a cultural treasure, if you will, for many, many, many years until it was resuscitated, brought back. And, uh, uh, in, in the, in the eighties, right. Or so in the United States, <laughs> yeah, she'd love that. Uh, and and so um, so that proves, okay, so why was it brought back? It was brought back, hey, Lavender Pants, another Ohio boy, good to have you. Uh, it was brought back for its superior penetration. And, uh, and, and it was even Americanized for the advanced purpose, for that, for the advancement of that purpose. Now, you have a very sharp point and a very acute tip. However, it's backed by a massive triangle or pyramid of, of uh, steel here. So you can, you can thrust more than once with th this through hard materials, and it will keep up. It will hold up because of the way the material is kind of stacked behind it. So I think the magic of threes is really is really the name of the game here. We all know that three is a magic number. We all know that a tanto tip in cross section is a triangle, and uh, well, actually, in three dimensions, it's a pyramid, and we know that that is a very very strong shape, and uh, therefore, um, though it it doesn't have the extreme look of a dagger, it it turns out that the the tanto with its pyramidal cross section at the at the tip makes it a uh, superior penetrator and uh, n not for nothing but it'll come back and keep coming back to the fight because of all that mass that was longer than a minute but no one's keeping track <laughs> all right so that was a pretty good argument there bob thanks all right so let's do this now ready this is the dagger I'm just going to pretend to look at my watch. And all right, here we go. Well, Bob, you actually uh, started my argument with your argument. Daggers have been around forever, really forever. And they haven't gone anywhere. And they have not been subject to trends like your Tanto. And they have not been culturally appropriated like your Tanto and then twisted into an Americanized version like your Tanto. Daggers are, they're like meta blades. The, the Tanto is like the, is, is, is the offshoot. The Tanto is an evolution. And, and just because I've used the word evolution doesn't mean that that's necessarily positive. You can have evolutionary um, aberrations. You can have evolutionary dead ends. And perhaps the Tanto is one of those things that was just resuscitated for style. Uh, but you will notice that throughout history, the dagger has gone nowhere. That being said, let's talk for just a minute. You were, you were going on and on about this tip of your Tanto and how it's triangular. And actually in three dimensions, it's a pyramid and we all know how. Well, look at this. This in cross section is a diamond. A diamond is two triangles. 
A diamond is two triangles that are uh, atop one another. And they are held, they are uh, atop one another, but here, I'm trying to hold this. There you go. They are held atop one another on their widest, one of their, uh, along one of their wide uh, sides. <laughs> math. I told you fifth grade math was a problem. Therefore, uh, by your own argument, Bob, the, the having two triangles at the tip is even stronger than having one triangle. So this is going to penetrate all day long. And, uh, you know, it's not going to break off at the tip just because it's a dagger doesn't mean it's a, you know, it's some sort of shrinking violet. It will do the trick and it will do the trick more than once. And you do not have to have a big, awkward, triangular shaped blade to penetrate anything. You can have a simple double edged pyramidal cross section or I mean diamond cross section blade with a th with a rigid center to do that penetrating job all day long scene all right well what do you think i think bob two won and i wasn't expecting that uh i know that bob two uh, uh uh had a little bit more passion because i'm going through a little bit of a dagger thing now i guess and uh uh so maybe just the conviction Behind the argument is what won it, but uh, Tanto's no contest, more versatile. Even in battle, uh, that secondary tip is more dangerous on flesh, more than a dagger. That uh, you can, with the with this secondary tip, I think this is what Incognito is talking about. With this secondary tip, you can do kind of, if you're, if you're fighting, uh, you can do kind of percussive, uh, um, these kind of like, percussive snappy shots and 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 really i mean you can watch uh, 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 uh jimmy slash does this on brisket all the time uh, you can just hit the soft tissue dagger body armor tanto a diplomat <laughs> i like that uh oh you can get pretty deep penetration with a depending on how steep this angle is this is actually a, a pretty uh shallow curve there but on some of those uh doesn't the Tanto have a stronger tip? Did you not just listen to what I was saying, Chris? <laughs> I was saying that uh, that this is this is twice it. Yes, it does. But uh, I think my argument was pretty good. I believe the dagger was created to penetrate chainmail. Right, slip right in there, right? Especially if you got that rigid spine down the center. So yeah. Anyway, uh, what we were talking about is you can get incognito. Was saying that you can get a real pretty nasty cut with this um, the reason daggers don't change is because it's hmm, shape doesn't allow it not because it was good mm, that's actually totally inaccurate no i'm just kidding yeah you know um what what i will agree with is that or what tanto bob will agree with close to call bob and bob must now duel. <laughs> uh, yes, I've seen these kind of live streams before. Bob is a master debater. Thank you. Thank you, Mav Dog. Cool logo there. Um, where was I? Daggers, daggers, daggers. Oh, yes. Well, the, the double edge obviously makes it way less um, practical. Now, you could argue... I think the dagger will pen penetrate. Now, you... You can argue that, uh, geez, man, whoa, senior moment. I thought Tanto was for sure going in, but but Bob V2 had some really good points. Thank you. Point. I <laughs> saw that. Oh, what was I going to say? I had some really profound point I was going to make, and it, it uh, like a phantom at dawn, just evaporated. So uh, I'm sure it'll come to me in a moment or or at three in the morning and then I'll do another live and I'll, I'll make sure everyone gets back on so you can hear this deep thought. Dagger would be harder to defend against with a forearm, for example, if grazing high or. Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK, OK, OK. This is what I was going to say. For most purposes, very impractical to have two edges because, you, you know, you can't bear down with your thumb. You can't smack the back of the blade. You can't use 
you know, you always have to be aware of that. Some people I've heard argue, oh, no, 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 it's way practical. Once you dull this side, you flip it over and use this side. But I mean, you know, you're probably not using this for, you know, feather sticking and stuff like that. So if that is really, uh, it's an interesting point. I'm just not so sure it's actually practical. Now, something I'll show, something I will attempt to show in the uh, video of this is uh, how amazingly the 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 people over at um, Spartan, let me get this on camera, how amazingly they did the tip. I mean, the tip is just perfection. This thing is superb. All right, all right. I've said enough about how awesome the Spartan Harsey dagger is for now. I will make a video doing the same thing and uh, and all the rest. But I want to thank you all for coming on and watching um, and listening to the show. Tanto equals fighting, dagger equals assassin. You might be right about that. Though uh, um, Les George was saying that he has uh, heard stories from people in the in you know, in, in the service who are using his dagger, uh, the V 14 and that it comes in handy sometimes when you're like, when you turn a corner and you're this close to someone. Um, so dagger is definitely not utilitarian unless your utility is assassination. I think that's the point everyone's getting at. And, uh, I guess I would have to agree. There's, there's no reason to try and avoid that kind of thinking. So, uh, so we won't. We will we will stay right here. Bob, thank you, Jim, for another great Thursday night. Not, thank you, Monster. And thank you to everyone else who came on, who's been watching, who's been commenting. It's been fun. And, uh, you know, we'll be back here next week. And in, in three weeks, we'll have another giveaway uh, for Patreon. I'm not sure what we're going to be doing. Uh, but thanks, Monster. You have a great night, too. I'm not sure what we're going to be giving away, but it'll be sweet. And then we are also going to have a uh, uh, another giveaway coming up. Have a lovely evening, folks. Thank you, Tri-State. Lovely evening to you, everybody else. Chris, great live stream. Good night, everybody. Blade Ogre, take care. Nice knives. Stay sharp. Caleb, good night to you, sir. Always a pleasure. Mav Dog, thank you. Ah, uh, thank you. I appreciate that. You have a good one, and everyone else out there, have a good one. Stay safe and. Uh, and uh, we'll see you here next weekend. No matter what happens, I don't care what happens, no matter what happens, don't take dull for an answer.